Starship is focusing on Boost 12 readiness. SpaceX Falcon 9 is grounded. Avio is to launch solo. RFA is completing its third stage tests. Artemis 2 is taking shape. Cosmo Leap presents its Star Shang. I'm Christophe Paget for All About Space, and this is your weekly space news update. At Starbase, at the launch site, we have seen this week booster number 12 carrying out a spin prime test, meaning that the propellant was passing through the engine chamber without technician. We have also seen a static fire of its 33 Raptor engines for about 9 seconds. The next day, on July 15th, SpaceX conducted a cryogenic pressure test on booster 12. Now that should be the end of the booster test campaign until wet dress rehearsal prior to integrated flight test number 5. SpaceX was also testing the retraction of the Starship Quick Disconnect, which is the umbilical to fuel the Starship and must get out of the rocket way to avoid being melted. Now, the retraction speed was all but quick. Next to it, the second section of the second Mekazilla Tower was being assembled. And at the production site, La Padre has also spotted a Mark II version of the Starship forward section. The version 2 on your right has its forward flap further forward and much smaller and thinner than that of version 1 on your left. The thermal protection tiles have also been extended further on the back of the nose cone as the atmospheric re-entry plasma must have extended much further than anticipated. The Vega launchers joined the ESA developed launchers family with its first flight in 2012 and started commercial exploitation in 2015. Vega C, a more powerful version of Vega with a larger fairing, made its debut in 2022. Both variants are built under the responsibility of prime contractor Avio and have been exploited by Ion Space. ESA member states are finalizing the changes needed to the framework governing the exploitation of ESA developed launchers to allow for Avio to become Vega launch service provider to allow Avio more freedom to offer their services outside Europe. INSPAS and Avio have agreed that INSPAS will remain the launch service provider and operator for Vega and Vega C launch services until Vega flight number 29, scheduled in Q4 of 2025. Now, Vega C was grounded until the engine issue discovered in December 22 has been fixed, and the next Vega C rocket is currently being manufactured and soon on its way to Kourou in French Guiana to prepare for a launch on November 15th this year. NASA has rolled out its next SLS center core or first stage for Artemis 2 mission. The stage left the NASA Michoud Assembly Facility in Louisiana and on its way to Kennedy Space Center in Florida via a barge. The center core already contains its four RS-25 engines. The SNS rocket will carry four humans around the moon with a launch no earlier than September 25 in preparation for a human landing on the moon for the following mission, Artemis 3. RFA, or Rocket Factory Augsburg, a young German rocket company from Augsburg, is preparing for his maiden flight towards the end of the year from Saxofort in the Shetland Island. In the northern part of the UK, of his three-stage rocket called RFA-1. The first stage has nine in-house Helix engines, whilst the second stage has one Helix VAC and the third stage has a Phoenix engine. Now, the rocket is designed to put 1.6 metric tons to low Earth orbit, up to 150 kilograms to direct geostationary orbit, about five times more powerful than Rocket Lab Electron, but about 15 to 30 times less powerful than an Ion 6, just to give you a ballpark figure. Already a few months ago, they shipped an 
Static tested their first stage with just four Helix engines. Last month, RFA installed all nine Helix engines to his first stage and are preparing for a further static test in Saxe Ford. For those who missed it, back in June 2023, RFA had already tested and qualified his second stage out of Esringer in Sweden. This week, RFA has tested and qualified his third stage in Munich, running a 590 second burn after a simulated stage separation, followed by a 40 minute coasting to complete the test by a 30 second orbit circularization burn to reach a simulated low Earth orbit. So far, RFA has mastered all required milestones to get ready for his maiden flight, so keep watching this channel to get the next installment on RFA. Cosmolib, a private rocket company from China, founded earlier this year, is surprisingly familiar looking. Look at what they plan to build. Although we do not have the dimensions of such a rocket, what inspiration from a certain rocket you have seen before, don't you? I think it deserves to be called the Star Shang. I will keep you up to date with further developments as they unfold. The week started and even ended with no Falcon 9 rocket launches. What? Yes, none whatsoever. Now this is a first from SpaceX. Well, actually, it's not so surprising because last week, the Falcon 9 second stage suffered a RUD, meaning a rapid unscheduled disassembly, or in simple terms, an explosion, after it has released its 20 Starlink satellites at a lower altitude than expected. The FAA has requested a mishap report and corrective actions prior to reviewing and reissuing a launch license. So, it might be a few weeks until we see some Falcon 9 taking off. If you find this upsetting, please call the Falcon 9 helpline for support. But in the meantime, SpaceX is multiplying its tests at McGregor site in Texas to understand the possible causes of this issue. The FAA has received a request from SpaceX to provide a public safety determination that process would allow if found safe, to allow SpaceX to continue satellite launches only whilst the mishap investigation continues. Moreover, no other rocket worldwide were launched this week. Now, that is rather a rare event. I leave you with this remarkable galaxy called ARP-142, taken by the James Webb Space Telescope, also called the Penguin and the Eggs. ARP-142 lies 326 million light years away from Earth in the constellation Hydra. Now that is 3.1 sextillion kilometers or 1.9 sextillion miles. Now, thank you for watching. I'm Christophe Paget for All About Space. Goodbye and have a great week.